Hey guys, I'm just sitting here, another parking lot vlog, see as you can see I'm uh, sitting in the parking lot here, there's the uh, hospital over there, and I, I don't know how well you can see it over there behind me, oops, sorry, hit the window, but the uh, cancer center is over there behind me where dad is, uh, not really a whole lot to update on, oh, there goes the security guy again, not a whole lot to update on. Dad's inside getting his treatment, uh, radiation. Luckily, he's only got a week left, and then it looks like he's in the clear again. He'll be can well, I shouldn't say he'll be in the clear. What I should say is he'll be uh, cancer-free again, uh, luckily. Everything looks good at this point. He's... Uh, He's only got, he had his uh, second to last chemo treatment yesterday. He'll have one more chemo treatment next week on Tuesday. And then I think Wednesday of next week is his last radiation. And then he should be pretty much uh, free of cancer again. Um, it's nowhere near as rough for him this time around as it was the last time. So it looks like he's going to be okay this time. So I'm uh, I'm relieved. Cuz whenever you hear about anybody having cancer, the first thing I always think is oh my you know, I don't I don't usually think the worst. I expect the worst, but I never hope for it. I always hope for the best. Expect the worst, hope for the best. That's be or I shouldn't say expect the worst, be prepared for the worst would be more like it. But you know what? A lot of people could tell you, oh, you should prepare for the worst. You know what? You can never prepare for the worst. When the worst actually happens, you could prepare for it all you want to. It's still going to hit you. And you're still going to take it hard when you lose a loved one. Uh, a very good friend of mine in Vermont is going through that right now. Uh, she lost her grandmother in August and uh, now her grandfather is pretty much dying of cancer. I have absolutely no idea what it's like losing both grandparents in one, especially in one year. I I know what it's like to lose my grandmother. I know what she was going through there. Because my grandmother was sick for a long time before she passed away. But my grandfather is still alive and well. In fact, after I'm done taking Dad, uh, you know, Dad's done with his radiation here and I take him back home, I'm going to be heading over to actually cut his grass for the last time for this year. Which, probably going to be mowing up a lot of leaves too. And then I'll be going out to breakfast with him like we do every Wednesday. And, uh... But that's... He's alive and all. But I have no idea what my friend is going through right now. And I from, found out from her that, uh... I guess a friend of hers, uh... Uh, had just committed suicide on Halloween night. Poor girl's going through a lot. I I'm trying to be here for her, but she's she's going through so much. It breaks my heart that I'm not there's I I'm not able to help her like I'd want to. But on the other hand, I can only be here for her, you know so much unless she accepts my help, and she really isn't right now. She appreciates that I'm here for her. She knows I am. But, um, I don't know. I got a couple people walking right by the car right here. <laughs> uh, I just totally son of a bitch to record them. Anyway. Uh, uh, let's switch hands so you can see me from the other angle. I got the, uh, I'm resting my hand on the steering wheel right now. Um, yeah, but she's gone through a lot. She's been through so much. Like, she's just been through so much in her life, period. And, uh, I don't really know what 
else to say. I care a lot about her. I mean, she means a lot to me. She's a very good friend of mine. And, uh, just to see her go through all this, and unfortunately, like I said, she lives in Vermont, so it's not like I can, you know, physically be there for her, you know, to actually, you know, give her a hug and let her cry on my shoulder, or, or you know, whatever. It's tough for me, because I want to be there for her, but I'm here, uh, you know, she knows I'm here for her, she knows she can talk to me, I guess that's about the best I can do. Wow, that car is beat up. I'd show that to you on camera, but, uh, uh, well, now that it's passing, I don't want to show its license plate. Anyway, um, I just, she's been dealing with so much. I mean, I know she's been miserable. She claims that she's happy, but she's, I know she's been miserable. And she just seems to be, anybody who wants to help her, she just seems to be, uh, there, let's switch back over to the other. Anybody who wants to help her, she just seems to be pushing away. So, the best I can do is I just, just be here for her, and that's pretty much it. Just like I'm there for all of my friends, uh, including you, Mitch. I know you've been kind of going through a rough time recently, too. I mean, you're... Yeah, I mean, you're getting dicked over at your job, and you're trying to find something else. And I feel for you, man. I do. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky to be uh, the job I have. It's not much of a job, you know. I don't get paid much, but it's something which is better than nothing, and I'm happy to have it because of what it I, what it is I do there. You know, I'm I'm happy with it. I I don't have to deal with a lot of people. Actually, I don't really have to deal with anyone. I work there by myself. For those of you that don't know, who are watching this right now, I am I, I run an American Legion hall for the American Legion. I run it for their post. And uh, Dad is actually the hall manager. But of course, because he's going through all of this stuff right now, he's not really able to deal with that. Uh, I actually took over running it for him uh, when he had his first bout with cancer in 2009. <laughs> in the spring of 2009. So I've been actually running the hall for two and a half years now. That's a hell of a long time. And I worked there... I, he did it for... from May to 2008 to winter of 2009. So he did it for almost a year before he started in with the cancer. And then I took over and I've been doing it ever since. Because obviously you know, he's not able to do most of it anymore. Even you know, he had limited capacity, only being able to you know, because when they with this, um, I, I'm stumbling around, guys. I've been uh, I've had a lot on my mind lately, and that's part of why I'm making this video. I'm just kind of a, uh, I know I'm kind of scattered with what I'm talking about, but it's kind of the way my brain operates. Um. Only breathing on, you know, with less than half of his capacity since with the surgery with his first round of cancer, they took his right lung, which is the bigger of the two lungs. So, I, there, between there, with the human lungs, between both of our lungs, we have five, there's two chambers in one lung and three chambers in the other lung, or three, uh, three sections or whatever you want to call it. They took the, the right lung is the lung with the three sections, that's the bigger lung, that's the one they took. So, Dad is literally breathing on two-fifths of his breathing capacity of what he... You know, two-fifths of the capacity he had before. That's not good. He's learning to live with it, though. He's just... He doesn't have the, uh... The capa there goes the, uh... There goes the security dick again. <laughs> he just doesn't have the breathing capacity he had before. So, I mean, a lot of the physical work at the hall, like moving tables and chairs around and the, doing a lot of the cleaning, he just simply doesn't have the energy to do it anymore. So I, I'm, I'm able to do it. I like working at the hall, though. I mean, it's really not bad. I don't have to answer to anybody, really. I, I've never been real comfortable working around a lot of people. So the fact that I work there alone most of the time is fine by me. I can crank up the television. I can relax. I can take this camera with me or whatever. I can make videos while I'm there and nobody, you know, nobody bothers me. 
That's a big thing. Nobody there bothers me. That's the one thing I like. I don't have to worry about some jackass supervisor or some dumbass manager or something like that. I don't have to deal with any of that. I don't have to deal with getting scheduled to work hours I don't like because I set my own schedule. I have 100% control of my work schedule. I like it. I like that a lot, actually. It's up to me to do everything there, but that's okay because i got plenty of time to do it all. Uh, working there is very much a part-time job. It's never been full-time. The busiest month I probably experience is December because of all the Christmas parties. But once January rolls around and it hits the dead season, I uh, don't mind it much at all, actually. December's always been a good month for me. And I'm, of course, with the holidays coming up, I get to make a lot of money and I'm going to switch hands again. Sorry about moving the camera around, guys, but I'm working with a... This, I can't show you this video camera. Actually, I guess I could. Here's the video camera I'm working with. It's... There you go, right there. That's my video camera. It's about the size of a credit card, and it's actually thinner than my wallet. It's probably about that thick. I, I, really, like, we're, I really like this camera because I can carry it around in my pocket with me. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm being random. Um, but... Yeah, working at the hall is just, it's its a great, you know, it's a great experience, too. I can actually use my experience here when I go to find another job. I actually have managerial experience that I can use for another job. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> I've got, I'm got kind of a cold, too, guys, so excuse me sniffling and wiping my nose in front of you. But, um... I just keep thinking about my friend in Vermont. She's uh, she's going through a lot right now, and I just hope she, that whatever it is she's dealing with, she has. If she's she's not she's not talking to me much, but hopefully she does have somebody that she is able to talk to, and somebody to help her through all of this. So uh, she'll come out. Um, she'll come out of this a stronger, better person. I hope. But um, if any of you guys have a friend that's like that, hey, you know what? When you're done watching this video, let that person know. If you got a, you know, whatever, whoever it is, if you got a friend, uh, you know, a good friend. Female or male, whether you know, it doesn't matter. If just if you have a good friend, just let them know that hey, you're just let them know that you're a good friend to them. Let them know that you're there for them. You know, just if you got an old buddy you haven't talked to in a while, and you say, hey, you know what? Maybe I should keep in touch with this guy. You know what? Do that. You know, uh, my buddy Shane down in Virginia, he. Uh, he recently uh, went through. He's going through the same thing. He just lost a friend of his. Uh, I gotta switch arms again, guys. Uh, he lost a friend of his that uh, he unfortunately never had the chance to meet in person because unfortunately he didn't have the means to get to the state that this friend lived in. He lived in out. Of, you know, he lived out of uh, in a different state than Virginia. Uh, this friend of his passed away. And he never had the opportunity to meet him in person. And my buddy, uh, you know, Shane's really broken up about it. The poor guy is, you know, he took it really hard. And I don't blame him one bit. You know, if I have a friend in a different state who passes away before I had the chance to meet him in person and, you know, hang out with him and whatever, I'd be really broken up about it too. So... If you got a buddy, especially a buddy who lives out of state, maybe you haven't seen him in a while, maybe you've never met him in person to begin with, let him know you're there for him, you know? Just say, hey, you know, how you doing, buddy, or, you know, how you been, or, you know, whatever. Just let that friend know that you're there for them. Be a good friend to them. Just be, just be the friend that you can be, 
and just say, hey, you know, if you know this person, you could say, you know, if you know them in person, I mean, and say, hey, you know, why don't we, uh, you know, why don't we get together, you know, if you're married and your friend is married, say, hey, you know, why don't we get together, you know, you know, you and me and our, you know, our spouses or whatever, we'll we'll go out and get something to eat or something, you know, or you and your buddy say, hey, you know, we'll go, uh, we'll go get a beer or something, we'll, uh, you know, we'll get a six pack and watch a Red Wings game or, or whatever sports game or something. Just you got to keep good friendship going, you know. The friendships you have are the only friendships you're probably ever going to have, because the dumber and more asshole like people get, the less friends they're going to have. So. You gotta value your friendships. You gotta value the friends you have. You gotta keep it, keep in touch with them. Let, just say, hey, you know, how you doing, man? If you haven't talked to that friend in a while, I'm sure they'd be, I'm sure they'd be happy to hear from you. So, that's really all I have to say for today. Uh, my uh, my ramblings are, I know I've been kind of random uh, through this video, but that's kind of the way I work. So. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to go ahead and shut her down and uh, head on inside and uh, wait for Dad to come out from his radiation. But uh, if you guys ever have any, uh, hey, leave some comments for me. You know, if you're, if you want to or, you know, like this video if you want to. I don't know why. I've, it's just me rambling for probably 10 minutes now. So. I'll report back to you guys later if I got anything to say, but uh, for right now, take it easy, guys, and, you know, take care of each other, you know? Be a friend. Talk to you later, guys.